performing this year two gems of the French Baroque repertoire. One very important piece by Jean-Baptiste Lully called Idylle sur la paix, and a piece by Charpentier called La Fête de Rueil. The two pieces have a special relationship with one another. They were both created in 1685 for the same reason, because uh, Louis XIV had just achieved a truce, a great peace, and they're both celebrating that peace, sponsored by two rival noblemen who were both trying to show just how magnificent their appreciation of the king was. It's interesting to note that the original performance of the Lully wasn't in a grand appartement at, at Versailles. It was performed in the uh, orangerie of a chateau by a nobleman who commissioned the piece to flatter the king. And had it been performed, the Charpentier was designed to be performed outdoors in a garden in front of a statue um, in honor of Louis. And in the end, the performance didn't happen because Louis thought it was very political as to which nobleman's party for him he, he attended, so he decided not to attend them. And for that reason, we believe the Charpentier was never performed in the 17th century. <laughs> French music is all about the dance. In order to become human, you have to dance. That's kind of the basic thing about French culture in this time, um, that you move through space and you organize your body and you present yourself publicly, and a lot of that is in training of dance. So the music of this is highly inflected by dance, not just the dances themselves, but a lot of the vocal numbers are essentially dance songs as well. <laughs> I'm so excited that we're doing two operas that are quite different from each other actually, even though they were written at the same time. Uh, the first one for the dancers has two dancers portraying very important roles of peace and war. And the costumes are fantastic for them and they dance in a noble style as you have seen in many Banff productions with opposition and very upright torsos. In the second half, it's more of a for the dancers feels more like a party scene, a garden party in fact. What's so fascinating in the Baroque period is that sense of theater. And you would say that the sense of theater is present also in the, the historical fashions, that people would put up a show by dressing every day, especially if you imagine putting on these wigs and these, these costumes that have certain volume to them. It's, it's in so much contrast to the fashions of today that I think there is something totally performative about those outfits. <laughs> I like the fact that they're both short, that they're these sort of one-act things, uh, and that despite the fact that they're not a full-length opera, there's still so much both musical and in terms of um, creativity within the pieces. You know, just it's, it's these little miniatures of all the things that you can accomplish with a French Baroque opera. I really enjoy that. <laughs> Thank you so much, so much, so much.
it's hard to explain why this music is is so touching. It doesn't. It's not going to touch everybody the same way, of course. But for me, it's a deeply emotional experience because that music is very, very special. It's from a certain time in a certain place where things happened much more slowly. People had a lot of time to think, to write, to compose. And you see that in the music, in the way that Dracine wrote the text, in the way that Lully said it. It's a commitment of two fantastic composers to celebrate peace uh, with a capital P. And that is very touching. There is a lot of uh, music and uh, opera which are celebrating love, which is of course very important uh, too, <laughs> but um, the celebration of peace resonates today in a very strong way. There is no more universal concept than peace.